Hello, everyone. This is a Prime Media Weekly program, and uh, it is a special edition as a Prime Log. Today, we have uh, guests from uh, different parts of the United States. So uh, before we uh, get into the actual interview, I want to uh, give a chance for everybody to introduce themselves. So we can start from Maryland, then to Nebraska, then uh, to Ge Georgia, and the last one would be uh, from DC. So let's start from uh, our sister Lydia first to introduce herself. Oh, thank you, Mahadi. You're welcome. Um, my name is Ledet and I am from uh, Washington, DC. Um, by profession, uh, I'm in the public health field, uh, work uh, focusing on mental health research. Um, I am also um, an advocate for civic engagement, um, both in Ethiopia and the US. Um, I've been pretty active uh, for more than five, six years uh, on Ethiopian and US affairs. And I'm happy to be uh, here um, with Prime um, and honored to be among all of you. Thank you, Ludet. Uh, next, Mr. Kader. Yeah, my, my name is uh, uh, Kader Omar and by profession, I am uh, a senior environmentalist and uh, I am an activist. And also I have, uh, I expose myself in social media and uh, supporting the Ethiopian government and the change is taking place in Ethiopia. Next, our guest from uh, Nebraska. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Prime Media and all of you guys, uh, Obamadi, and all of you guys, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jamal Abdukulim Hassan, professionally, Dr. Jamal Hassan. I was born in Eastern Ethiopia, Hararge. Uh, then I lived in Minneapolis, Minnesota for a long time, and I did my undergraduate degree, and uh, then I came to Nebraska where I did my uh, doctorate degree. I am an epidemiologist. I've been practicing for the last five years and I would like to stop there about me. So thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Jamal. Uh, last but not least from our, our guest from Maryland. Yes, hi everybody. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to Prime Media and great to be with you on the same platform. Uh, my name is Tabeb Wasafa. I make home, raise my children and Tacoma Park, Maryland. I've lived uh, two thirds of my life in America. So for all the practical purposes, I'm an, an American Ethiopian. So the, the perspective that I'm going to provide will be from that narrative. Uh, I'm a, an activist, but I'm a social entrepreneur. For the last 15 years, I've worked uh, massively with the support of many, including members of the US Congress to conceive, develop and promote a new international trade geared towards development that aspires to provide investment opportunity to farmers and growers uh, organized as a community and a co-op uh, uh, all over Africa. But I'm, I'm launching, this is called Benefit Corporation for Africa Initiative. Uh, we're trying to kick it off in partnership with 400,000 small coffee farmers organized in the Oromia region. Uh, basically, it aspires to give them an opportunity to invest and own. We've put a, a, an offer on the table to the members of those 400,000 small coffee farmers to invest $6 per farmer, which is 400,000 times six, which is $2.4 million. And I have uh, on this side um, uh, created impact investors who are willing to, to match that investment. So basically what we aspire to do is open a roasting facility here in the heart of America. So the farmers can own 50% of the roasting facility and they can get 50% of the profit. And this is the first model. So basically I'm a servant of my people, the farmers and growers of Ethiopia and the four corners of Ethiopia. So I'm a, I'm a social entrepreneur, I'm an activist. I'm trying to influence the US-Africa relations to benefit the people of Africa. And my initiative is gonna be launched from Ethiopia, I think. That says it in a, in a nutshell. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for the introduction. And it's also interesting that we have uh, uh, individuals from uh, different backgrounds and very interesting background. We have people from the healthcare side, from the environment and social entrepreneurship. So uh, what I see is there is uh, an interconnection in all these uh, uh, professions. At the same time, 
it is really very important to see, you know, uh, the whole uh, social spectrum, political spectrum, and the economic spectrum when it comes to the Ethiopian uh, development as well. So uh, today, anyway, our discussion is going to be about the current situation in Ethiopia and the development in the northern region of Tigray, uh, uh, as well as, uh, I mean, the conflict that is going around probably for a week. So uh, my questions are going to be specific to that situation. And at the same time, we can also uh, try to transition between uh, ideas and thinking as you guys also can add, you know, to the questions. And it is uh, a free discussion. Uh, so uh, I am not going to limit you on the specific question, but you guys can have, you know, different examples. You can, you can connect it to your profession as well as to your uh, personal thinking. So uh, I will start the first question from uh, Mr. Tababu. Uh, so my first question is going to be, uh, since this uh, internal problem between uh, TPLF and the federal government has started, we are observing a lot of misinformation and disinformation uh, all over the world, especially when it comes to from the social media to the mainstream media. So as, is, as a US citizen and as a responsible person and as a person who is working to help you know, African uh, society, uh, how are you evaluating the development of this misinformation and disinformation when it comes to Ethiopia's current situation? Uh, that's a very good question. If I may, let me first set the context. The context is very, very important. Uh, and a timeline, uh, let me start from a vision that I have. The vision is as I'm an American Ethiopian. I work here, I pay tax, I vote, and I aspire to have the US foreign policy be conducive to peace and progress of the African people. And because I come from the Eastern part of Africa, Ethiopia, I, I'm gonna launch my initiative from there, as I said earlier. So as an American who aspires to redefine US Africa trade, for the benefit of both. First and foremost, there has to be peace, there has to be good governance, and the aspiration of the, 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 the people who make Ethiopia home has to be recognized, and we have to anchor our, our, all our political aspiration in service of that, that context. That said, what's happening today in relative to what needs to be done in order to really help our poor, Ethiopians who, dwell, who, who work from sunrise to sundown, but they can't afford the basic necessities. I start from that note, and I look at the current objective and subjective reality in Ethiopia in that context. And I am really, to be honest with you, disappointed by, you know, as my, my Secretary of State initiated and confirmed by the TPLF uh, uh, members, this current problem was ignited by the ill-advised, Ill dangerous move the TPLA political party, not the Tigrayan people, took against the national defense that is stationed in Ethiopia. A very cruel, you know, an unimaginable act of treason because the, 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 the forces in, in, in northern Tigray were there for the last 20, 20 some odd years helping the people of Ethiopia, I mean, Ethiopia, Tigray, to, for the benefit of the, the, the people of Ethiopia as a whole. So that act has been condemned by the US government. I condemn it because it brings crisis and it does not adhere to the ultimate, the ultimate core value of the US government, which is democracy, good governance, prosperity, economic development in America, as well as the region. So what TPLF did is contrary to that human human aspiration and uh, and then TPLA it was given a chance and unfortunately the Ethiopian people rejected it's it's politics ethnic based ethnic hate based politics the Ethiopian people rejected the vicious dictatorial governance that they had the Ethiopian people rejected the corruption that they created so the Ethiopian in America there is election for every four years Yes, the president will come, a vision will be given, an opportunity to, to translate his vision into reality, and that the people concur, they will give him another term. 27 years, it's enough, Ethiopian people have said. So 
I, I'd like to put a, you know, a very strong emphasis. I'm talking about the political party that represented the Ethiopian region that went to the jungle, fought, took power, not the Tigrayan people. I've been to Tigray, I know the Tigrayan people. I've been to the four corners of Ethiopia. The biggest enemy that we have in Ethiopia is poverty. And the only solution to poverty is our collective struggle in the global economic and cultural space on behalf of our people. So we need peace, we need governance. And what happened now in Ethiopia is a renegade group taking a very offensive, ugly, un unbelievable act of treason. And the Abi government is losing it as right. In fact, they have, the Abi government has been criticized for being too patient. For the survival, the sake of the survival of peace in the region, they've taken a measure and that's a necessary measure, but it has to be respected by the international uh, forces, stakeholders. And as an American, I would say this is anti-American foreign policy. Again, it's the prosperity of the people of that region beyond Ethiopia, Africa as a whole. It has to be stopped. And the Ethiopian government has been given an opportunity to continue the reform that it has started. And looking at it as an American, I also support the Ethiopian government critically. If it doesn't stay true, to make sure that the people of the region are respected, are given an opportunity to live together, tackle their, 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 their challenges, They're the most pressing and urgent. We don't even have clean, I mean, most of our people don't have clean water. Forget, forget other, other amenities, other, other privileges, basic water. So in that context, the, Ethiop the Ethiopian um, diaspora and as an American has to pursue has to influence the American government to make sure that American foreign policy is conducive to peace and progress in the region. And the Ethiopian government has to do whatever it, make, it, it does to make sure that is sustained. And the TPLF government, the TPLF political party has to, to stop its hate-filled ethnic conflict-based politics and cease and desist because it's enough enough we can't we can't take it no more I've, I, I have spoken the people of Ethiopia and the, the prime minister has come with a, a a vision that can possibly give us the break that we've been seeking for 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 days and I, I would leave it as such uh, thank you uh, mr tababu so uh, uh, dr Jamal you are going to be the next uh, uh, speaker on this issue <laughs> so uh, from your observation and your experience about misinformation that is going around when it comes to the conflict uh, about the internal problem that is going on in Ethiopia. Uh, what have you seen so far I and mean, how the public is understanding or, or misinformed about the development in uh, Tigray region and as well as in northern Ethiopia? Omadi, thank you so much. Um, here is what I have to say. Um, first of all, as my brother mentioned, TPLF was in power for 27 years. Those 27 years, this organization never cared, let alone for entire Ethiopian people. They never even cared for the people that they say that they represent Tigray people. So for the last 27 years, what they had done in that country was inciting war between ethnic groups, for example, between Amhara and Oromos, between Somali and Oromos, between Gragi and that. So for the last 27 years, that's what they have done. When the prime minister uh, of Ethiopia, Dr. Abiy Ahmad came into power and they knew that they lost from that point. So what they did was they left the power and went back to Makale and they tried to organize themselves and with other groups, like for example, I will say on this, about Oshane. So what they did was they organized themselves and they have been working among <laughs> themselves how to destroy Ethiopia, how to overturn uh, Dr. Abi Ahmadi's uh, government and take over. So from that point, what they did about two weeks ago, I think almost two weeks ago right now, they went into the military base, the military which actually they created, the federal, the federal military which they created 20 years ago, 20 something years ago, they started war with them. 
they actually slighted these um, uh, guys and women and uh, men in the uniform without, no, without shame. That is international disgraceful actually, internationally. So now what they have been doing is, they said the government of Ethiopia is start war with Tigray people, with the Makale and the Tigray region, which is false propaganda. For example, they have been talking about this thing and with paid guys on OMN media and the Tigray media house and another media, the Hegere media house. So this is shameful. This needs to be stopped right now. What the government of Ethiopia is doing is they said, no, enough is enough for the last 27 years. From now on, I don't care who is going to broke the law. I am going to protect the nations, the citizens, nations and nationalities of Ethiopia. The game is over. The game that they have they had been playing for the last 27 years is over. So this administration, Dr. Abi Ahmad's administration is there not to benefit himself or his group. He is there to protect Ethiopians, nations and the nation, nationalities equally and implement peace, democracy and uh, prosperity in that nation. For example, he said when he first, Dr. Abiy Ahmed said when he first came in, past is past what has, what was going on in Ethiopia for the last 27 years, whether wrongfully or knowingly, let us, let us the past and come together and forgive each other and reconcile and move forward from now on. So this TPLF group is about uh, just their uh, clan, actually, I call them actually clan, TPLF clan. They refused his call for peace and democracy. The reason is for the last 20, for 27 years, they were in only to benefit their, themselves, not even the Tigray region. So like, for example, right now, uh, now international communities actually uh, uh, getting real information now. There is one uh, ambassador saying that TPLF, you need to stop your game, game that you had been playing for the last 27 years. So at this point in time, I think it is, we have to come together as Ethiopians. We have to come together and let international community know about this game. So what I have, I have to say right now is, uh, with these medias, uh, OMN and uh, Tigray Media House and they, their guys, they need to stop. This is shameful. Our people have suffered for 27 years. We cannot suffer anymore. We cannot. We need to move forward. We need to develop this country. So that's what I have to say. What they have been playing is a game and a really bad game, actually, a really bad game. I have to tell international community, for example, Elizabeth Warren, she misunderstood what was going on. I sent her email and I've been sending email to this international community who really do not know what is going on in Ethiopia. They need to know the realities on the ground. The reality is Dr. Rabbi Ahmed and his administration trying to uphold the rule of law. The law, everyone is under the law. Nobody's above the law. Like during the, um, the, the time TPLF was leading for the last 27 years, if you have money and the power and you are within that group, you can do whatever you want. You can actually kill people in uh, Eastern Hararge and come to Wallaga or Gondar, come to this city and move around accordingly as long as you have money and as long as you are part of them. So that game has to be stopped right now because uh, as my brother said, in Ethiopia today, what we need is coming together and create unity and move forward. According to a World Economic Organization, 85% of Ethiopians today, they make less than $1 a day, 85%. So for how long are we going to create this uh, slopely slope where we have to uh, make a case to create a war? always to just benefit our own self. So this has to be stopped. This has to stop right now. That's what I have to say. Uh, I will end uh, right here with this question. 
Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jamal. Uh, it has, uh, you have uh, touched a lot of points and you have also described, you know, the conduct of this uh, uh, TPLF group and its relation with, his, with the society and uh, with the state apparatus as well. Yeah. So uh, I want to uh, invite to this talk, uh, Mr. Kadir. Uh, I mean, different from uh, Mr. Tababu and as well as uh, Dr. Jamal, how you view, you know, the misinformation that is going around. I mean, uh, when it when it comes to misinformation, misinformation doesn't stop somewhere. It affects family. It affects community. It affects a nation at a great level. So, uh, what is your observation on this? Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, all my brothers uh, address really uh, what needs to be addressed, and I want to say this: these guys from the gate go when they came here they built their administration for the last 27 years with lies, lies and lies. To achieve that, all they did was they divided us so we don't get united. Ethnically, they divided us, but still they rule the country. Still they rule the country. They suck our resources and a 95%, probably 98% is their generals are Tigrians. Look what they have done. It's and then idea. they organized their agents abroad, well-funded, and the resources they suck from Ethiopia, they use that money buying, hiring lobbyists. Even Mullis, the prime minister of Ethiopia said, even stealing is a job, so long as you, are not, you, you don't get caught. Imagine now. What kind of prime minister is going to say this to, the, to his subjects? How? To your subject, how can you say that? Even stealing is a profession so long as you don't get caught. You know? So what they did was they put their people in an international organization, Save the Children, UNHCR, United Nations, look now, World Health Organization, and one of the crook is sitting in there. Todros Adhano, and instead of doing his work right now, he is actually advocating for TAPLF. I don't know if you may have heard that. That tells you a lot about the skies. So what they do is, what they did to us, we Ethiopians are not organized because that is exactly what they wanted to do. They hired some of us as an agent. I am an Oromo and he is an Amara. He is a Somali and all of the skies. Some of them are hired and then we are divided. But the proof is when Dr. Abi take over the power, the streets of Washington DC was shaking. People were so excited, so happy. A liberator came. But one thing we all fail to understand is he is alone. The TPA left structure is still there. Unless the TPA left structure is removed. The TPA left structure, those people, they organize. The people who are in power are the people who have been robbing people, stealing people, okay, killing people. They are still in power. And under these circumstances, the prime minister could not do anything because he, have not, he doesn't have his own structure yet. But we have to support this government. That's what I have been saying. Now, what happened is, as you can, you are aware, if there was, there was an opportunity, by the way, a refugee opportunity for Eritreans. You know that Eritrea and the Tigrians speak the same language, but the Tigrians were taking over the Eritrean uh, 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 allocated uh, 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 refugee status, came to United States. Their job is what? To spy on, they are paid to spy on Ethiopians. They have a lot of resources. They buy houses where the money is coming from. And I wanted the world to know that. You see, United States will know even the pin drops what have, what's going on in Ethiopia. We don't have to tell them. Maybe the public at large may not know. But now, because of what's going on, what happened to our military, the Ethiopians are united. We are working together right now, except a few remnants of TPLF agents. So what we have to do right now, what we are going on, like I said earlier, we're talking about, and. Um, uh, Mr. Tibabu is also a part of it, and uh, led it, and uh, all of us, basically, is a CEDA, which is uh, the Ethiopian uh, 
ዲያስፖራ ተግባር ምክር ቤት እንግሊዘኛው ጠፋኝ ይቅርታ ሄድ ዘ ኢንግሊሽ ፓርቲ ዘ ሲድ አይ ቲንክ ኢፍ አም ናት ሚስቴክ ሴንትር ኢትዮጵያን ዘ ዲያስፖራ አክሽን ኤንድ ዘ አር ዱዊንግ አ ማርቨለስ ጃብ ራይት ናው ኤንድ ዊ አር ዲሲሚኔቲንግ ዘ ትሩ ኢንፎርሜሽን ኤንድ ሪፍሌክቲንግ ዘ ኢትዮጵያን አስፒሬሽን ኦኬ ኤንድ ራይት ናው ኤንድ ኦል ዘ ፐብሊክ ኒድስ ቱ ናው is ethiopians see the light as the end of the tunnel and we don't want that to be removed we want to see that light wide open and so all ethiopians going to enjoy it thank you thank you mr kader uh, your explanation was so interesting and some of the facts are uh, something that the international community uh, uh, may have an understanding about or may may, don't, may not know but uh, raising this issue on this platform is very important so i will just reframe this question for ledet in a different way so you know when conflicts uh, happen when uh, political uh, frictions and confrontations are there within a nation children women are used as a hostage and these days what we are seeing from the tplf character is uh, once they started losing you know uh, their uh, their uh, military status let me let me just explain it that way their military status within this uh, law enforcement campaign they started to shift you know to misinform the world let's saying that this government is causing casualties at the at the same time making children and women fled you know their homes so Uh, how are you going to uh, tackle uh, this misinformation and how you want to explain it when it comes to like uh, uh, suggesting the fact on ground okay thank you mahadi um i think uh, my brothers here did uh, uh did talk about a lot of the uh, uh, most important things but i i do want to address <clears throat> the fact that um misinformation um really comes from corruption um because um it's as we can see there are a lot of uh, western media um currently that are um you know uh, uh publishing a lot of articles about Ethiopia and the current um operation regarding a rule of law but uh when you look at the articles um you can uh, clearly see um where the article is coming from it's uh usually um uh, it's more it's become more of a lobbying instrument and one of the things that um that is uh, very hot for the media uh, world is any type of conflict anytime there is any type of uh, conflict especially with rebel groups or any um stronghold um inter um internal conflicts um this is uh, a prime time for media to actually make money it's uh, and you know it's a very sad uh but it, it has become a very corrupt field um i don't think it's a secret but a lot of times people are um very disappointed in figuring out that media is uh, no longer uh, controlled with ethics like it used to be um it, it ought to be uh because there are a lot of uh, fake information um uh, being spread uh, all over and i think this is also a, a matter of um uh time uh but i i believe uh, ethiopian government and ethiopians in general have a lot of case when it comes to uh the misinformation that's been going on currently uh, having said that um uh, looking at the um hostage situation with women children um uh young uh children being forced to um uh to hold up arms um uh, it's very saddening it's very heartbreaking uh yesterday we actually were um dissecting the last uh interview that the uh, president of tigray uh gave and um i was watching it um along with many audiences and um a lot of people mentioned that um uh he's in a church and uh it was uh to my surprise the more i listened to the uh, interview you can actually clearly hear uh church chanting that was not coming from far but it almost sounds like he is actually giving the statement from a church facility so um 
like you said, uh, you know, losing the status, the military status, the military stronghold, uh, when you become um, uh, in a situation where uh, you no longer hold uh, the upper hand and things, um, a lot of uh, uh, hostage situations arise. Uh, talks, I'm talking about also uh, the recent um, attacks of military while they're sleeping. Um, women and kids are, um, you know, um, becoming refugees and uh, uh, running to Sudan and other nearby uh, border countries uh, because of this situation. It's a humanitarian disaster. Um, and this is um, the kind of uh, uh, the kind of uh, unprecedented uh, measures that's being taken for what you know what is it being uh, why are people sacrificing for this and uh, the sad part about it is it's uh, really truly to uh, sacrifice these innocent people so that. Uh, um, a, a few uh, TPLF leaders can go on and continue to control and galvanize their uh, resources that they have already galvanized or they have already uh, have in their hand uh, to further gain more power. Um, so uh, it's sad. Uh, and as mentioned, um, uh, they have stronghold uh, uh, and even in the diaspora, there's a lot of money being spent on misinformation. Uh, this is not just the local um, Ethiopian media outlets, but even in the international media outlets, uh, they are investing uh, a lot of money. And this, uh, this is why it's very important that we get our voice out, like Dr. Jamal mentioned about writing letters. And we currently have um, a voter voice campaign which already has a letter written about our current situation. All you have to do is um, uh, write your information at the bottom um, and send out emails that will send to the White House, to Congress and Senate. And that was just started um, uh, yesterday and today. So um, people need to participate and get to actually educate our uh, Congress about our situation, uh, educate the Western world because Anyone that picks up any of those misinformation, uh, uh, misinforming articles can have a very different outlook than actually what's on the ground. And um, I take it like it's our job as well um, to fight this misinformation. It is a very interesting expl explanation as well, uh, because uh, the Western world, uh, they are more, uh, the society in the Western world are more manipulated by uh, the media whatever the media uh, describes would be the actual truths within the Western society because they trust a lot their media institution. So from that perspective, uh, the way the Ethiopian community abroad are working to tackle this problem as well as to address, you know, uh, this misinformation, uh, the tools that you guys are using is uh, very effective, especially addressing the officials uh, in the United States, uh, maybe the senators, the Congress, uh, the, the Congress and the, the, I mean, the House of Representatives and all U.S. institutions that work uh, regarding international development. So uh, the, the next question anyway will be, uh, a question uh, in a different uh, manner, because all of you have described, you know, the history, uh, how the war started, and where are we today, and what would be the next step, and all those kinds of uh, uh, substances have been explained in in your uh, talk. So, what I want to ask in the next part is, now we are seeing a strong mobilization within the Ethiopian community. We are seeing the society is understanding togetherness better than any time in the history. The last 27 years have been years of division, confrontation, and fighting you know, among each other. But now what we are seeing is we can see some sense of unity. Unity is arriving at least from uh, the thinking perspective. So what I want to ask is how 
the Ethiopian government, as well as the Ethiopian society in general, can use this opportunity to, made, to mend the past you know, uh, division, the past hate, the past misunderstanding among nations and nationalities. What, is the, what opportunity are we seeing today when we see this public mobilization? Let me just give this, uh, this time the opportunity for Mr. Kadir. What I can see is uh, right now, and uh, <clears throat> what I have said, uh, you see, <clears throat> there is a lot of confusion because the Ethiopians have been divided ethnically. We don't trust each other, but we know one thing. We have one oppressor, vicious oppressor, Everybody hates that oppressor. When that oppressor is removed, even so he is removed, and then a new vision has been replaced, but yet the agents remain in power. They are in the military, they are in the government sector, in every localities. Those localities, those officials are working against the prime minister of Ethiopia. That makes it very difficult. As you know that killing is happening in Amara region, killing is happening in Oromo region, and here and there. And it was a restless action has been taken against our people. But people became suspicious. And recently, I think in Oromia region, an innocent Amaras has been killed. They have been pointing a gun against the government, thinking it's a government, because why the government cannot control it? Like I have said earlier, it's just like, um, I don't know how to describe it. But now, now every Ethiopians in, Ethi in Ethiopia, abroad and internationally, they recognize they are the source of these atrocities committed across the Ethiopian region. Now, it takes time for these people, let alone in Ethiopia, even here abroad in the United States and in, in, in diaspora, to get together and united with the same voice. We are against the TPLF regime. Regime still remain in power in Tigray. And actually the Tigrayan people are liberated now as a result. So, we just started maybe not too long ago, we just got our uh, 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 um, uh, legality paper as a CEDA, a member, which, is, uh, which has uh, an international uh, outlook on the scope. Uh, uh, we work on these things. And then now we will be working to unify. For example, today I was in a meeting with UK group, UK community, and uh, each and every one of them are organized to support and the government action and on TPLF and to apprehend those criminals. Now we're gonna bring that group under one umbrella, united under one voice and uh, to execute and to generate money to support the uh, people, the needy people in Ethiopia and also to support, to, uh, uh, to, to do advocate work, advocacy work like um, uh, Mr. Tebabu earlier indicated. We are working on it. But right now it is at, it is early stage. We just started it, they are, and and now everybody is wake. Everybody wake up now. They realize who is doing what in Ethiopia. So if you had asked me, probably um, uh, if you ask me, maybe two weeks later, I mean, I will give you a definite answer. But I will tell you right now at this juncture, workers has been on the way. We are working on it now. The Oromo community has been addressed. We are bringing people together right now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kadir, uh, Dr. Jamal. Uh, how this impacts the internal uh, community within Ethiopia, the internal society? I mean, now we are seeing people are more energi energized, encouraged, I mean, to eliminate this uh, junta from, you know, uh, the Ethiopian politics, if, if possible. So what is going on in Ethiopia, do you think can affect the society in a, pos in a positive way so that they can reimagine their unity again? Uh, Obomadi, thank you so much. Uh, here is what I'm going to say. Before I answer that question, please, if you allow me, I would like to bring a little bit about myself in here. 
uh, first of all, what I believe in is law and order in our community, especially Africa, like entire African communities. I have traveled so much for work uh, to a couple of African countries and outside of the United States and within the US. So what I have seen is so much, for example, in the United States, look at, look at how uh, far left, I mean, far left and far right really do not like each other. They, you would think they will eat each other up. However, the law and the constitution that they have in place is so perfect. And even if my father in, in that place of the power in the US. And if he is wrong, I will say he is wrong. We have to respect the uh, constitution. So what I'm trying to say here is our community, Ethiopians for the last 27 years and even prior to that, we are inclined to our tribes and our ethnic groups. And we really divided each other for so long, more so within the last 27 years under the TPLF regime. But now, here is what I'm going to tell my uh, fellow Ethiopians, especially the young, uh, the youngsters, and who is informed about the uh, interna I mean, internationally and about uh, a strong constitution. So what I'm going to say is, it is a time to say no to the tribal division, no to the ethnic division. First of all. I can tell you that I'm an Ethiopian. I'm, I, I'm, I do believe that 100% I'm Ethiopian. I'm not less Ethiopian or more Ethiopian than anybody, okay? So I'm going to say this because I came from one of the largest ethnic group, Oromo group, okay? If ethnic group would save you, my father would be saved. When I was, when I was only six years old, they killed and they tortured my father in front of our eyes. Who did that? My own Oromo people did that. So today, if having coming from largest ethnic group will save you, I, my, I wouldn't lose my father. So the corruption goes up to that level. One is the society is corrupted. They are corrupted for one and all. So what I'm trying to say here is, please, I don't care if you are Amara, Oromo, Tigre, Gruage, Walaita, Kambada, even white community who just immigrated to Ethiopia, do not incline toward your ethnic group and toward your tribe or toward re your religion. Hold up on to the constitution, law and order. If we really want to see very strong Ethiopia, Ethiopia that is developed just like the United States, like Dubai, like Europe. We need to be friend with law and order and constitution, not a person who is at the top. I don't care today if Dr. Abiy Ahmad is a man from Madagascar, from Kenya, from United States of America, as long as that person is a man of hope, a man of truth, a man of vision and mission. What I see that in Dr. Abi Ahmed, he has a big future for this country. He has big dream for this nation, for all ethnic groups, for all nations and nationalities. So it is a time, let us give a chance for our prime minister and help our prime minister see where Ethiopia will be within the next 10 years and 20 years. Especially, I'm going to say this again, for uh, to answer directly your question, yes, Ethiopian communities today from left and right, and the politicians and the laymen, I think they are understanding some truths. I think they are understanding, and that this is a moment for them to come together and say, let us move forward. For how long our sons and daughters going to be a dinner of hyena, a dinner of uh, a fish in the water? So it is a very crucial time and a very important time to come together with politicians, elites, and all groups of Ethiopia to move one uh, uh, forward. So that's what I have to say. Again, once again, if 
really coming from a religious ethnic group, I wouldn't lose my father. I lost my father who was a very brilliant businessman and who had every dream is for us. I was only six years at that time and who killed my father? My own people, Oromo group. Then I have lost so many uncles and aunties. Where? In Hurso, who killed TPLF. So I am done with this seriously um, inclining to this, oh, my guy's not there. This is from this ethnic group. That is from that ethnic group. We have to say, we have to move forward, actually. We really need to move forward. It is 2020. Look at our nation today. Like we all said previously, 85% of Ethiopians today, they make less than a dollar. 10 years ago, when I graduated from the university, I went to Ethiopia. I have visited Gwanda and Gojam, Hararge, Wollo and Wollaga, even Makale. What you see on the streets of in Ethiopia in each of these cities, unless you are very lucky that your parent or your relative is related to this group, or somehow you are lucky, you come from well-to-do family, which is about 10% of Ethiopian population, you will be begging for money, begging for dinner, begging for one lunch. Guess what? Ethiopia is not less intelligent. We are very smart people given a chance. I was able to visit a Harvard, Harvard University about 10 years ago. It says, do not take classes with Ethiopians unless you are prepared, especially science classes. These guys are dangerous, meaning very smart people. So it is a time for us to come together to throw away this bullshit about, I'm sorry for this language, about ethnic group, about this religion, about that religion, about this location, that location, no. Today, let me tell you, when I visited all those places, I felt home in every one of those places. Although I do not speak English, I mean, speak uh, Amharic in Gondar, I was just accepted. So it is a time for us to say, you know what, we're gonna come together no matter what, because we don't have time to waste. We don't have time to just always beg for food. So let me end with this. Thank you, Dr. Jamal, and your personal story resonates with everyone. And uh, that is really uh, a sad uh, part of uh, uh, your uh, life history. And uh, hopefully you are recovering from that today. So, uh, Mr. Tababu, uh, I want to uh, shape this question in a way uh, that really interests you. Can the Ethiopians today use this opportunity as a social capital to build coexistence and harmony as you are also a social entrepreneur? That's a very good uh, question, Abu Mahdi. Uh, Dr. Jamal, you, you've touched my heart. Uh, not only your intelligence, your, your, your emotional energy touches me. And, uh, so I'm grateful for that, the sharing. You know, in, in, in English, they say the, the silver lining. You know, behind every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. And to be honest with you, looking at uh, the future coming, I see bright earlier, my brother kind of said that, I see a light of hope. This silver lining start from this conversation. Look at us. We come from different perspective, but we have one vision. And we all are burning with desire to make sure our people, you know, break, break the back of poverty. You know, we've, God has given us so much resources. We're endowed. We're beautiful people. We have history. We have culture. The first Tijra, the first Tijra alone can teach the world. We, we own the first Tijra. You know, the tolerance among different religion, you know. The Prophet Muhammad has blessed us from day one. We can tell America how to coexist. We have a culture, the Gada, the, the Gada culture. I mean, you know, it's just we have, we're endowed, we're endowed with natural resources. We're ancient people, we're proud people. So the silver lining is we have come to our senses. And let me look, let me end this, uh, you know, uh, crisis, whether it is man-made, whether it is perceived, 
whether it is an, 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 a natural, uh, caused by natural forces. Crisis is an opportunity to re-examine your position and be innovative, come up with ideas. You know, it opens your eyes, our eyes are opened. So what are we going to do is a question. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna, you know, live with this positive. As an American, as I said earlier, you know, America is trying to regain herself on her, her African, her, her footage in Africa has been highly marginalized by the aggressive, unethical, greed-driven uh, Chinese policy in Africa. The Chinese are making $200 billion a year by all means, including corruption. They don't care about, about the people, they care about their profit. And America, right now, in con in, by comparison, America only does about $65 billion a year. America has, has recognized that fact. And in 2018, America created a new policy called Build Act, reorganized her developmental finance infrastructure as one, and created an institution called Development Finance Cooperation, allocated $60 billion as an investment to provide Af um, Americans to venture into Africa, take American technology, to work with, uh, with, with African, African people for the benefit of both. So we have six, $60 billion sitting on the table. So what are we going to do is the question. First and foremost, I'd like to underscore what brother Dr. Jamal said. We have to understand my well-being is intertwined with you. The well-being of the Oromo people is a well-being of mine. The well-being of the Gragi people, the Tigrayan people, you know, we have to understand our faith is intertwined. By the way, most of the problem comes from the international economic order that was put, put in place by the colonial powers. Africa is suffering because the economy we have is just called extract, uh, extract, resource extract economy. We extract, we give, we give to Europe, Europe finishes, we buy products. We don't create, we are providers of commodity. Our manufacturing, manufacturing base has been really marginalized. Africa only tra trades 15%, intra-Africa trade is only 15% today. The coffee that, is, that comes from mother Ethiopia produced by small farmers in Orumi and Sudamo in Irgachafe who work nine to, I mean, from sunrise to sundown, put 90% of the work, they only get, as I said earlier, 10% of the money we pay here to those who sell coffee to us. Ethiopians living in America give $100, billion, $100 million a year to those people who sell our coffee back to us. We need to pull that out and invest it. You know, we have to take advantage of our purchasing power, our political power, our investment capacity, our remittance economy, pull it together. As I said earlier, if 1 million Ethiopian diaspora invests $20,000 a year to, from their investment and, 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 and consumption and remittance economy, that is $20 billion we can use. In addition to the $60 billion America has allocated for investment in Africa. So we have to be smart. He were we hard working for America. We work hard for America. We made America great, you know, in every field, from a street vendor selling hot dog to a restaurant owner, cafe owner, and from medical professionals, lecturers, name it in every sector where they're making America great. It's about time we wise up. We are benefiting from the democracy in America. Nobody asks us where we come from. We go wherever we want. We are we are thriving. Why can't we do that in our own homeland? So the silver lining is, here is an opportunity for us to all wake up and say, hey, let's, in fact, I'd like to tell Ethiopians living in America, Ethiopian Americans, to demand a billion dollar investment towards Ethiopia within two, two to three, five years. Because we, have, we are voters, the money is our tax dollar. Like many other people who demand, we can demand. And we can come up with an investment opportunity that provides access to our poor farmers here in the US. We can create wealth. We can live an Ethiopian dream slash an African dream in America, which is going to be good for America. As I said earlier, if America, I go and sometimes I 
I, I, when I do a presentation at the US Congress, I tell members of Congress, if you allow me to provide my poor African farmer an, invest, an opportunity to pull its, you know, the coffee farmers, if they pull their $6, put it in the pot, that's $2.4 million. And I've been asking for a policy and they're giving it. So I say to them, if you give me an opportunity to partner with my poor farmer, not only the par farmer can take care of his life, I can also create jobs here. So as an American, as an American, we have to think. As an American, we have to be smart. By the way, uh, the children that we raise here, unless we do that quickly, we're, gonna, we're going to lose them. So what the silver lining is the crisis should make us wake up. I'm very happy, excited. So we have to tell the US government, this is, this is the interest of America I'm talking about. I'm an American. So from that perspective, here is an opportunity for us to know our life is intertwined we can only win together and we can, we have, as a social entrepreneur, I urge you, I urge you to rethink your investment power. You know, we vote every four years, but every, every day we pull our wallet and cast a vote 10 times a day. That's an economical vote we, we cast. We should ask, where does it go? Isn't, do I support my farmers in Ethiopia, my, my poor farmers? You know, you walk to an Ethiopian grocery, ask them where they buy their, their, their lintel and chickpeas. They get it from Turkey and India. Why? Because the one that comes from Ethiopia, the quality is not par world standard. So where are the Ethiopian entrepreneurs? Why don't they pull their resources together, work with the, African, the Ethiopian and African farmers, finish value add, sell here, be, be wealthy while you stand tall, while you promote your, your culture, your history. Your, so it's a silver lining. Here is an opportunity. So on, a, on the spectrum of 50 years, the problem that we have right now is so minute. So we shouldn't lose focus. And we have to tell the US government, this is the interest of the US government to make sure the Ethiopian, as the people of the Ethiopians' aspiration prevails. And as an American, I'm gonna warn Abi as much as I'm, I have a critical support for him because he has to be accountable. My, I bow to the people of Ethiopia. I've seen them, they work hard. I've, I've, I've worked from Tigray to from, from South, North, East, you know, not when we're living in such a rich world, not when we have such a power. So in that context, my friend, the silver lining is, let's grow this dialogue. Let's respect one another. I'm this, look at this itself. I've never seen it before. And relatively, the vision of Medemer, envisioned by Prime Minister, Dr. Abi, Abi and the philosophy of prosperity as a, as a vision, be national, national unity. Hey, maybe we can take the world how to come together. The world is going apart. Maybe America can learn from our Madamer. He got a Nobel Prize for bringing Ethiopians and Eritreans together, not only Ethiopians and Eritreans, the whole region that is for the very first time we're breathing the, the hope of peace. So the silver lining is, hey, it's time here for us to lead, for us to live an Ethiopian dream in conjunction with the aspiration of our farmers and everybody all in the political landscape. In fact, if there is any political ideology that will emancipate Ethiopia, it is the farmer, the farmer, the farmer who has sustained us. We are arrogant. We are arrogant at, the ex at his expense. So that's what I have to say. The silver lining is that, hey, good time is coming. Let's wise up. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I have lots of questions, but unfortunately, time is up. What that is the message that I'm getting from I'm 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 getting from Mr. Kader, uh, Lidet, uh, Just as a last opportunity, uh, you can just add your uh, uh, idea on this one, and we can uh, close uh, for today. I think um, uh, the story that Jamal shared. Uh, is shared among many, many, many Ethiopians. Um, it's a country just like Tababo has mentioned that uh, economically we are disadvantaged in a lot of ways. Um, I think it's also a country with a lot of uh, disadvantage uh, because of uh, trauma. Uh, there's a lot of trauma um, in our country. Uh, and uh, just like Dr. Jamal gave an example, uh, th those trauma and uh, atrocities uh, uh, can um, 
be both caused by our own uh, people, our own ethnicity, our own family members, our own um, community members, um, or it can be um, outside. But uh, the bottom line is that there is a lot of trauma and it really depends on how you deal with the trauma that unfortunately um, that some of us have to deal with. And um, I, I, I want to acknowledge Dr. Jamal um, uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, let the audience know that um, it's not an easy process to get to this point of uh, dealing with a trauma as a child and then later on as an adult and uh, to have that outlook of uh, wanting to um, uh, not hold grudge on a group of individuals, uh, whether it be by ethnicity or religion or by labeling them uh, based on their political uh, ideology. Um, it takes a lot uh, to, to get to that position. And I think one of the key um, uh, factor in helping you um, achieve that uh, knowledge is through education. Uh, when you are educated, um, uh, that's also one, uh, you know, major factor in Ethiopian uh, um, politics or social uh, engagement is uh, education. Uh, when you are educated, uh, you realize that uh, you are actually going to be uh, judging people by their uh, integrity, integrity uh, by their level of uh, uh, humanity uh, versus uh, by their tribe, by their uh, religion, and by their ethnicity, and so forth. So um, as interesting, as wonderful as our conversation has been, this is the work that also we have to really take opportunity during this time to kind of work on the trauma uh, of the Ethiopian uh, people in general. This should be a stepping stone uh, where we are today uh, at the end of whatever transition we're uh, getting ready to make. We have to make that commitment to start the treatment of trauma. The stories of Dr. Jamal and many other people needs to be told. And the reason why it's very important to be told, not just from the perspective of uh, being a victim, but also the perspective of being a victor of trauma. And I think that's going to really help uh, uh, our society and understanding that uh, the only way we can uh, overcome this type of division and uh, really focus on the main goals of lack of water and lack of resources and lack of economic uh, progress and uh, um, joblessness and so forth is really when we can all unite and agree on these issues. Um, I, I think um, this uh, uh, will conclude my response to this because I think everyone else has done a great job. Uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I mean, it was so, uh, it was an interesting discussion among Ethiopians having different experience and uh, coming from different walks of life. So thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.